Hello dear students, welcome to Experimental Techniques and Material Characterization, lecture number 28. I am Dr. Parvez Ahmed. Uh, in this lecture, again, so we will continue our discussions on X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. Uh, this is part number 5th of the lecture series. Uh, uh, here on, uh, in this lecture, uh, we will have a discussion on cylindrical mirror analyzer uh, in XPS. So let's proceed towards uh, today's lecture about uh, CMA that is called cylindrical mirror uh, analyzer. So uh, uh, a typical uh, sketch of the uh, experimental setup uh, or you can say the working function of the uh, cylindrical mirror analyzer you can see it here in this uh, pictures. So here you can see that uh, we have the sample holders uh, which contain a sample hairs. And from here on, uh, we have uh, the X resource which emit the X rays and that fall on the on the sample. And after that, when the electron they are being ejected from the sample, so they are proceed towards uh, towards here. So uh, the electron ejected. Uh, I mean, once we shine the X rays on the sample, so the ejected electrons will pass uh, through a device which you can see it here uh, is called uh, CMA or in short is called cylindrical uh, mirror analyzer. So what are the different parts and how they work uh, that that is uh, the key of this uh, lecture or, or we can say that 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 is uh, uh, the main topic that which we will discuss here. So here you can see uh, uh, in this uh, figure uh, the CMA has uh, two concentric metal cylinders uh, at different uh, voltage. I mean, here you can see that. Uh, I mean, it's a, a cylinders. It's the first cylinder. It's the second cylinders, and uh, you can see that these cylinders, one of the cylinders, uh, will have a positive voltage, uh, which you can see it here, and the other will have a zero uh, voltage, which you can see it here. It's uh, it's already been put here. Uh, so what happened this will create I mean what is the functions that we have put one cylinder at zero voltage and the other cylinder at uh, uh, positive uh, voltage. So uh, the, the, the main purpose of this uh, uh, means of uh, the arrangement of the cylinder is uh, that it will create an electric field uh, between the two cylinder. I mean uh, we, we have concentric uh, cylinders. Uh, one cylinder has been put at zero voltage and the other is uh, positive uh, voltage. So the purpose of uh, these cylinder and their voltage difference is to create uh, uh, an electric field between the two uh, cylinders. So with the voltage on the CMA for XPS and outer electrons are uh, different. I mean this is the thing you should remember that the voltage on the CMA for XPS and outer electron uh, I mean, they are uh, different from uh, one and other. So what happens, so here you can see uh, in this diagram that when the electron uh, pass through the metal cylinders, I mean here you can see it. So what happens, uh, they will collide with one of the cylinders, which you can check here for uh, yourself. And what happened after that? Uh, and or um, the other possibility is uh, they will just pass through. I mean, there are two possibilities when the electrons enter here, uh, the CMA regions. So uh, the first possibility is uh, either the electron uh, will collide with one of the cylinders or they will pass uh, straight through uh, the cylinder and will move through uh, 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 their path uh, towards the uh, detectors which we have at the end of the CMA. So at the electron velocity, I mean here are the conditions, I mean uh, we are saying here uh, that there are two possibilities for the electrons, I mean uh, the electrons, uh, when the electron uh, pass through the metal cylinder, so either they will collide with one of the cylinder or they will just pass through it. So here we are mentioning the conditions that when it will be uh, like so. So at the electron, the first condition is, if the electron velocity is too high, I mean here we uh, produce the portal electrons. Uh, so if the uh, electron velocity is too high, so it will collide with one of the outer cylinders. I mean here we have the outer cylinder. So if the electron velocity is too high, so it will collide with the 
outer cylinder. This is the first possibility. The second possibility is if the electron is going too slow, then it will collide with the inner cylinders. I mean, the first possibility is for the higher velocity, if the electron velocity is higher, so it will collide with the outer cylinders. And if the electron velocity is too slow, then it will collide uh, with the inner cylinders. So only the electrons with the right velocity will go through the cylinder to reach the detectors. I mean, here we have the detectors. So only uh, we said the electron with the right velocity will reach the detector. And only those electrons, they will be analyzed for the composition of that particular uh, sample which we are interested to analyze uh, with the uh, XPS. So when uh, with the change in the cylinder voltage, uh, I mean here uh, you can see uh, we have different uh, voltage for uh, the uh, cylinders. So uh, with the change in the cylinder voltage, uh, the acceptable kinetic energy will change and then you can count how uh, many electrons have the kinetic energy to reach the uh, detectors. I mean, it's everything depend upon the change in kinetic energy of the uh, cylinder. And from here on, you can determine that how many electrons uh, that uh, might reach uh, to the detectors. So here we have the equations for the kinetic energy of the electron. Uh, that is, the kinetic energy is equal to H nu minus a uh, binding energy minus the work functions now let me explain it further here's uh, kinetic energy means the kinetic energy uh, that is uh, measured in the xps spectrometers i mean it's the kinetic energy of the electron that has been measured in the xps uh, spectrometers uh, h nu uh, what is h nu h nu is basically put on energy from the x-ray source uh, which is uh, controlled uh, Pi, what does it mean pi? Uh, pi is basically spectrometer work functions. Uh, it's a few electron volt and it gets more complicated because the material and the instrument will affect it uh, found by uh, calibrations. And then we have the variable function uh, that is B, e, B, mean, uh, B stand for uh, the binding energy in which we are interesting to find out. I mean, all these variables, that is kinetic energy, photon energy, and the work functions, these are the known variables. Uh, I mean, we already do know they are their values. Uh, the only unknown variable is the uh, binding energy, uh, which we have to calculate uh, during the uh, analysis, or which we need to uh, find out. So let's uh, talk about more uh, about these equations. I mean, the, the above equations, I mean, these equations uh, will calculate the energy needed to get an electron out from the surface of the solid. I mean, this is the equations, and it will calculate the energy needed to get an electron out from the surface of the uh, solid. So, knowing the kinetic energy, here you can see that. Uh, so, in these equations, uh, by knowing the kinetic energy, the protons energy, uh, uh, and work functions uh, that is pi uh, so uh, by knowing all these uh, factor by kn knowing all these quantities uh, you can calculate the binding uh, energy from which you can recognize and from which you can uh, find out what sort of the elements uh, you have in uh, your uh, sample so that's all uh, we have for uh, this lecture thanks for watching but stay tuned for the next important lecture on the X-ray portal electron spectroscopy uh, that will be on uh, interpreting XPS uh, spectrum. So stay tuned for the next lecture. Till then, bye-bye.